Hello everyone. So the upcoming video on the main channel is going to be all about tank on tank warfare. And a very important part of this subject are the different types of armor piercing ammunition that were developed and continually improved during the Second World War to deal with the increasing thickness and sophistication of armor. So this arms race between firepower and protection. And in this video I want to go over some of the basics of armor piercing ammunition and the, the most common type of armor piercing ammunition that was used during the Second World War by anti-tank guns and then main tank guns to deal with tanks. And that would be APCBC, which stands for armor piercing capped, ballistic capped. Now in the first part I want to go over what this actually means, so what the components are that come together to make an APCBC uh, projectile. And then in the second part I want to go over the HE part, high explosive, because that's a very interesting subject, because a lot of those commonly used armor piercing projectiles actually contained an explosive charge that was meant to explode after going through the armor inside the enemy tank. Uh, but the, the British, and of course the next video is going to be all about the, the British Challenger, they didn't use explosive filler and there's a few interesting reasons for that. So that will be the second part of this video. But to just get started right away, uh, some basic uh, background first. What is an APCBC uh, armor piercing round? What they are is, they are, they are kinetic energy projectiles. So that's important to understand that they function the same as a, an old cannonball or a bullet. So they are metal projectiles of a high density with a lot of mass that are then propelled at a very high velocity by a, a cannon, by a, a high velocity gun, which gives them a lot of kinetic energy. And they then transfer this kinetic energy into a barrier like an armor plate and punch through it. So the same way that a rifle bullet can go through light cover such as uh, wood, a armor piercing round is essentially an upskilled heavier rifle bullet fired from a bigger gun so it can go through more barriers, armor, thicker and thicker armor. And so, so that's why they're called kinetic energy projectiles as opposed to for example explosive penetrators like a high explosive anti-tank. That's a story for another video, but they don't use kinetic energy, they use explosives or other means to pierce armor. But APCBC is a kinetic type of round. Now what does APCBC mean? Like I said, armor piercing capped, ballistic capped is the, the, the final evolution, so to say. But before we get there, we have the regular AP, armor piercing, and we have the armor piercing capped, which is an in-between form. Now, all types were used during the Second World War, but most armies settled on using an APCBC type, and I'll explain why it was typically just better than the other versions. So the AP, like I said, it's a bit of an upskilled rifle bullet. So it has, uh, it, it's a metal body and it has a, a somewhat of a pointed tip which is for the, the aerodynamics, so it can fly through the air with less resistance and also to help with armor penetration. So if you imagine if it hits an armor plate flat on, the pointed tip will dig into the armor and then the mass of the rest of the projectile will then follow the tip and then make its way through an armor plate. And there you have it, you've penetrated armor, which is fine, but the problem a significant problem occurs when it hits a plate at an angle. And what you see is, as tanks develop, they start incorporating more and more angled armor plates because it increases the effective thickness, but it also increases the chance of a ricochet because what happens with a pointed projectile like this is instead of hitting a plate flat on, it will hit at an angle. And instead of the point digging straight into the armor plate, it will actually hit, it, it will glance off. So it will, it will find the path of least resistance, which is sliding along the armor plate instead of digging into it. Or what can also happen if it is a very hard armor plate and it hits it at an angle like this, is that you get a lot of pressure on the side of the tip and it will just break off. So the entire 
shot will shatter on the armor plate, which of course ruin its, ruins its potential of actually punching through if it breaks apart. So, to, to, um, to improve upon the design, they came up with a, a cap like this, also called a penetrative cap or an armor piercing cap. And this is essentially a, a softer metal in a blunt nosed shape that goes over the original pointed nose of the regular AP solid shot. And what it does is, on the one hand, if it were to hit an armor plate straight on as usual, it's no problem because it is the tip, the, the new cap is soft metal, so it doesn't really intervene and it just punches through the armor as usual. If it were to hit a, an angled plate, what now happens is instead of glancing off, as would happen with a pointed projectile, the flatter tip acts a bit like a hammer in that the sides can bite into the angled plate. And it also, because it is softer metal, it squeezes itself, so it spreads out and it opens the way. It acts like a shock absorber almost, to then make an initial entry and then the rest of the shell can normalize itself into the armor. So instead of seeking the path of least resistance, the, the softer penetrating cap gives it a bit of grip into an angled plate. So then the rest of the projectile can more easily punch its kinetic energy into it and then penetrate. So that's why these blunt-nosed, softer penetrating caps are used. However, as you can imagine, it ruins the aerodynamics because you have a blunt nose now, so there's more friction as it travels through the air on its way to the target. So the next and final logical step is to then add what is essentially a windshield, so a, a BC, a ballistic cap to it, which really does nothing more than just return the aerodynamic shape by giving it a long pointed hollow cone at the end, which is of a fairly light construction, so it doesn't weigh much. It has no real involvement in the actual armor penetration, that is still the, the cap and the actual shot. It is just there to uh, allow it to maintain its kinetic energy as it flies through the air to improve the aerodynamics. So ballistic cap, also called a windshield. So that gives us APCBC armor piercing with a cap, with a ballistic cap, is what most armies ended up using as their primary kinetic anti-tank round. Now there's a fun story actually with these ballistic caps, which has to do with the, uh, the Challenger, what the, the next video is going to be all about. Because as the Challenger was designed as a, um, a version of the Cromwell that can take the, the big 17-pounder gun, at the moment it, the Challenger was designed, the 17-pounder wasn't yet using APC-BC. The British at the time had only developed an AP and an APC for it. But as you can see, adding the ballistic cap increases the length by a decent amount. So the internal ammunition stowage arrangement in the Challenger was all laid out to take these shorter rounds. So then when it finally saw action in 44, well, ideally you wanted to use APC-BC, but they couldn't fit in yeah, all the, the ammo storage arrangements. So it was a bit of an awkward situation where in some storage bins had to take the older AP or APC and then only in a few select bins was there just enough room to carry the ballistic capped version as well. Uh, so yeah, that goes to show the, uh, the trouble of designing a tank if then the dimensions of the ammunition change all of a sudden. And yeah, the ballistic cap does add a bit of length to it. So um, yeah, that, that's, that explains hopefully what APC BC is. And then just to skip ahead to the little T at the end, that means tracer. As you can see there is this cavity at the base. These are 17 pounder projectiles. There's a little cavity for a tracer which then burns for a second or two so you can see your shot fly through the air and then make necessary adjustments whether it hits or it's high or it's low. But uh, more interesting and what I want to spend the second part on is the HE, the high explosive, because that's quite special that an armor piercing projectile, what is called a, a shot, then also is partly a high explosive shell like an artillery or a hand grenade. So it has a explosive filler that then bursts and it bursts the shell and throws fragments around. So it's a bit dual purpose. On the one hand you have an, an outer armor piercing layer but then you also have the softer internal core of explosive filler along with a fuse. 
This, by the way, so this is the 17 pounder. This is the German 88 millimeter gun, specifically the improved longer barreled anti tank version that you see on the King Tiger and the Jagd Panther. So, easily one of the best anti tank guns of the war. And here you see the, uh, the armor piercing round, so again an APC BC HCT. And this had explosive filler. Most armies actually used explosive filler in their APC BCs uh, because they yeah, they valued the additional post-penetration damage of having a round that ideally explodes upon entering a tank, just for the additional damage it does. If you don't have it, then it's a bit like a bullet or a cannonball. It punches through the armor and then it has a, a straight line or a bit of a cone where it damages the inside of the tank. So the crew, components, and it can set fire to ammunition and fuel. But it isn't necessarily like an... Um, an explosion going off inside the tank, unless you also add explosive filler, which is why they did it. However, it wasn't as great as it may sound on paper. And for that reason, the British were quite the notable exception in that they didn't use explosive filler in their AP ammunition. They tried it on the, the two pounder, which was their 40 millimeter anti-tank gun that they used in the beginning of the war. But they didn't like it, so they just stuck with the regular AP, APC, APC, BC for all their guns, 2-pounder, 6-pounder, 17-pounder gun. And they even went so far as taking the HE filler out of foreign ammunition that they received. So they used a lot of land leased Shermans that came with American guns firing American M61, APC, BC, HE ammunition. But uh, the British were so... Um, unimpressed by its reliability, that at least some units ended up just taking the HE filler out, so it was more like their own uh, domestic uh, um, ammunition. I have this from um, this book uh, about the Cromwell in Normandy, and here the author states regarding the American M61 uh, shell. Although the round was manufactured with a hollowed base section to accommodate an explosive charge, British crews often removed the base section and tracer to avoid the possibility of premature detonation and improve flight stability. So, yeah, that is, of course, one reason, improve flight stability, because it reduces mass as well. If you use a, a solid shot, like on the 17-pounder, you get a heavier projectile for its size compared to leaving a cavity for lighter explosive filler. So that improves armor penetration. You have more of a punch for the same size. But then also you have all this, um, th this mechanical unreliability with the, the fuse as well. Because as you can imagine, a tremendous amount of stress is put on a projectile. It is instantly accelerated up to a very high speed as it is fired out of the barrel. It flies through the air and then has an incredibly stressful impact against armor plate and not only does the the actual shot have to stay intact the explosive filler has to remain stable and intact and then the fuse as well has to trigger on the armor and then the delay needs to work perfectly so it then explodes inside the tank doesn't go straight through without exploding doesn't detonate prematurely so especially with the technology of the time it, it was quite difficult and unreliable which is one reason the british didn't like it I actually have, a, um, have it from a source here. This is a British firing trial that they carried out against a captured German Panther tank using all kinds of ammunition fired from all kinds of guns, including also American M61, uh, same that the Sherman uh, used. And, well, I'll just quote it uh, right away. One round of American M61 APC BC shell was directed at the lower half of the turret mantlet at the near side. The round detonated, scooped downward, shattered the roof plate behind the driver's hatch and passed into the hole with large pieces of roof plate. So, this, this tells us two things. First, there is a premature detonation. According to the report, as soon as the round struck the mantlet, it detonated and only then did it then ricochet off the mantlet. Now, M61 never had a chance of going through the Panther's mantlet anyway, but it does show that if it detonates as soon as it hits, well, if it hit a plate that it could go through, 
and it still detonates prematurely, that's bound to have a negative effect on its penetrating capability. It can't be good for uh, yeah, the structural integrity if the base of the shot explodes while the tip is still punching through armor. So that's one uh, interesting takeaway, is there was indeed a risk of premature detonation. But then another thing to take into account is that apparently the explosion didn't do much because the entire, the rest of the round still had enough structural integrity, enough mass to then bounce off the curved mantlet into the roof of the panther, panther penetrate and cause significant damage on the inside. Because what you want with a high explosive shell is that it blows the entire shell apart so you have a large splinter pattern. That's what dedicated high explosive shells, why they have thin walls, so they have more explosive filler and a better shrapnel effect. But clearly uh, the, the explosion of the M61 wasn't enough to actually blow the shell apart enough because clearly it still had enough solid mass to actually bounce off and penetrate more armor. So that raises the question, uh, like, is there even a benefit if it works ideally? If it works perfectly, punches through the armor, detonates inside the enemy tank, is there even enough explosive mass and will it create enough splinters? to really add a worthwhile effect for all the trouble that it is worth. Because as you can see here, like this German 88, it has a decent sized cavity for explosive filler, but the walls are still very thick and they have to be because this is an armor piercing shot. This is meant to be fired at a very high velocity and punch through armor while remaining largely intact. So there, it has to, be, has to have a certain thickness, but that means there's less room for explosive filler and in order to create a good burst pattern, there's more metal for the explosion to have to break apart to create splinters, which it just doesn't really have the, uh, the power for because it is such a small charge. So uh, for those reasons, there's a pretty good, um, pretty good case for the, the British to just do away with all the complexity with the manufacturing problems and just go for a streamlined solid shot. And this is also something you see in the post-war period, is that APC BC with or without HD, HE is dropped quite quickly after the Second World War in favor of newer ammunition types that just flat out improve penetrating capability regardless of post-penetrating damage. So you get things like APDS, that's a subcaliber Sabo projectile. Uh, that's a subject for a different video, but they have a higher muzzle velocity, much higher armor penetration, but the actual projectile is smaller, so there's less metal flying through the enemy tank, and there's not even room for explosive filler because they're smaller projectiles. And also seeing more use are heat high explosive anti-tank, so those use an explosion to create a penetrating beam, which again is great at actually burning through armor, but it doesn't have a dedicated post-penetrating effect. So again, that's another clue that really what matters with tank warfare is just punching through the armor and then the amount of damage you actually do isn't as important. So hopefully uh, this has been interesting. It's certainly just an important subject to, uh, to understand for the broader subject of uh, armored warfare, which will be discussed in the upcoming video on the uh, Challenger. And it's just a fascinating subject overall and then in the upcoming video we will definitely be doing a deeper dive into the 17 pounder specifically. Also the use of that APDS ammunition which was really quite revolutionary for its time. And uh, also going into the actual real world effect of these kinds of uh, armor piercing rounds and what they do to uh, tanks. So stay tuned for that and thanks for watching.